Hello viewers, welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel and today I have a, uh, a 2009 Subaru Impreza and it has the, the 2.5 liter single overhead cam uh, EJ253 engine. The customer has brought this car uh, over to me because he's going on a road trip soon uh, over the Christmas break to the USA and so he wants to make sure that this car is safe to drive. Also he wanted a bunch of maintenance work done. One of the maintenance items that we are going to be doing today in this video is replacing the timing belt along with the components and the water pump so uh, i just wanted to show you guys that uh, i just removed the the bottom bolt for the the timing cover because i'm going to be bringing it uh, into the garage so i won't have that much room to work on it so i'm doing it outside right now on the driveway i removed the bottom bolts this one it it broke off on me because uh, the bolt was too uh, rusted and I don't know if it was over tightened previously or not but the the plastic broke at the bottom but I'm going to be replacing the uh, the outer timing cover for uh, this one I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see but I was having a peek at the timing belt here it looks like it hasn't been done in a really, really long time. And it seems like that the timing belt is on the verge of a, a failure. Now, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see that much on camera. But you can see the, uh, the marks on the smooth side of the timing belt. I'll try to give you guys a closer look. You can see that the cords are exposed for the timing belt. You see all the cracking and stuff. Here's a, a better view. You can see it cracked and it's it's a uh, it's literally a, about to break. You can see as to how rusted the bolts are. Broken and uh, rounded off and rusted bolts is a sure sign that the, that the timing belt has not been done in an extremely long time. So I'm just giving you guys uh, <laughs> that tip. So uh, I already uh, removed the bottom bolt for the timing cover uh, earlier because I was doing an oil change. So I, I just removed the bottom bolts because it would be uh, a lot harder to uh, uh, remove from underneath the hood, especially that the timing belt hasn't been done in a long time so the bolts were very uh <laughs> rusty so i'm just gonna just i'm just gonna remove this top bolt for the uh the timing cover here because i just wanted to have a quick look at the timing belt before i start to remove uh, uh anything else so, Remove the timing cover once you get the bolts out. Now you can see how, how bad the timing belt looks like. There's a lot of cracks on the smooth side of the belt. Looks like it's it's going to break uh, at any moment. Now, uh, if you want to avoid problems like this, 
You know, you want to avoid a, a failure. Uh, Subaru recommends replacing the timing belt at the 105,000 miles or 168,000 kilometers. They also state that uh, it's either in time or distance, whichever occurs first. So, uh, 105,000 miles or 105 months, which is uh, roughly, uh, it's 8.75 years, so around 8 to 9 years. Then it says that the previous use and service history of the vehicle must always be taken into account. Remove the 10 millimeter bolt for the, the plastic uh, cover for the dry belt. And pull upwards. There's a grommet here. The clip and the grommet that goes in here. Now for safety reasons, because I'm doing a job like this, I like to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery so that the, uh, so that the uh, in case if there's anybody or if in case you, you, uh, somebody tries to start the engine or, and, uh, or whatever, uh, it's, it's a good idea to remove the, to the negative terminal of the battery so that uh, you, you don't run uh, uh, into any issues. And this will also prevent anything from, from shorting out if you're working on something like the, the alternator or, or something like that. The next thing you want to do is uh, to loosen up the, uh, the, the pivot bolt for the drive belt. So you want to loosen up the bolt here. It's a, a 12 uh, <laughs> a millimeter. And then loosen the top bolt here. You also want to loosen the mounting bolt here on the alternator. And then uh, you can, can loosen the uh, adjustment bolt. You can push down on, on the alternator and, uh, <laughs> and take the belt off. You can use a trim tool to remove the uh, the air box shroud. The air snorkel. Remove the clips. And uh, and wiggle this, and 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 then it uh, it comes out. So now you want to relieve the pressure for the cooling system. You want to remove the radiator cap because I just want to remove the upper radiator hose because it's uh, it's in the way. To so loosen up the clamp. Make sure you place a drain pan from underneath so you can drain the coolant.
and then we are going to do the same over here. So uh, remove the clamp for this end of the hose. You may need to use a special tool to uh, r r r remove the hose. So you, m you may need to use a special tool to r remove the hose, a hook or, or, or a pick tool. You need to twist it back and forth and it comes out. So uh, using a special tool, holder tool, insert it into the crank pulley. And if you don't have a, this tool, you can use like, like an old belt and wrap it around here and on, on the alternator to hold it still. If, you can't, if you're not able or can't uh, 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 fit an, uh, an impact here. So I'm gonna use a, uh, let's say I have a, a 22 millimeter half drive socket and a half drive uh, <laughs> breaker bar. So I'm just going to put it in there while holding this, while holding the tool still, I'm, I'm going to attempt to, to loosen the bolt. It's on very tight. You could hear me grunting extremely hard there. Ah, there you go. It's loose now. You can just loosen it up uh, by hand. So now it's uh, it's loosened up now. I can just remove it by hand. Remove the bolt by hand. Here's the bolt. So now uh, we are going to pray and, and hope that this comes out easy. That it doesn't require that much effort. You just need to, uh, to, to, to wiggle it a little bit. You need to be uh, patient with it. It's it's wobbling a little bit, so it should be able to uh, t to come off easy. You just need to uh, to work it through. That's all. You could use a mallet to 
to gently uh, get the pulley off. Not too sure if that's going to do anything, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep on on unwiggling it <laughs> back and forth, and hopefully it uh, it comes out. Just keep on unwiggling the pulley uh, <laughs> back and forth, up and down, and, and left to right. You need to be really uh, 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 patient. It's coming out. It's coming out now. There you go. Out it comes. So uh, I'm just going to remove the remainder of the uh, timing cover bolts. You can see there's some damage here previously. That's been there. Uh, <laughs> from before. One bolt that's down here. This one is uh, <laughs> coming out now. I'm going to clean all of these bolts uh, 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 after uh, uh, I'm done. Still one, two, three, three more bolts back there. Still, there's two on top there. Still. If you live in the Rust Belt area or Salt Belt area, 
uh, you are definitely going to get <laughs> something like this, especially if the timing belt has been uh, <laughs> neglected. There's a there's another one here um, in the back, just underneath the power steering pump. Bolts are not on extremely tight, but it's it's the rust that's that's causing the problem here. Too much rust build up on the bolts. And there's one down here on the side. You may need to remove the O2 sensor uh, wiring out of the way. sensor wires out of the way you may have to, to bend this bracket to get it out of the way I'm trying to see if there's any more bolts that's holding this in place Now we're just going to attempt to remove the timing cover. Out of the way. Uh, I have a replacement timing cover, so I'm just going to use that. You may need to bend the bracket a tiny bit. So we can get the, the cover out. Just get it out of the way. So what we're going to do right now, I'm just going to clean the, the crank pulley bolt. And uh, lubricate it with some oil and just temporarily install it uh, onto the crankshaft. So lubricate the bolt with some oil. I just don't want the bolt to get the, uh, <laughs> stuck. Temporarily. Uh, install a bolt so now we want to 
turn the engine and to line up the uh, the, the timing marks. I just wanted to, to tell you guys that this vehicle is equipped with the five speed manual transmission. So you will see on the manual uh, transmission vehicles, they'll have a, uh, a, a timing belt guide here. So uh, you would need to measure the clearance from underneath here to where the timing belt is. So there's a gap running across here. So you need to make sure it's within the proper specifications. I'm going to measure that soon. And uh, I'm going to uh, compare the before and after uh, readings. Um, I'm just going to see if I don't need to take off the guide. Because if I don't need to take off the guide, I'll save myself some extra work. So... Um, so I will uh, I will uh, get to that soon and 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 show you. So now you want to make sure that you have the timing marks all lined up. See the mark here, lined up to the mark that's uh, that's on the block. And now when we're at the the passenger side on the right side, it'll make sure that the uh, this this mark is lined up onto the mark that's uh that's on the head on the cylinder head and then on the left side you use the back of the timing cover here to line up the marks for the the left side, driver's side, uh, camshaft with the mark here. That's lined up with this. So this side, you use the back of the timing cover. The other side, you use the cylinder head to, to line up the marks. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, on these Subaru engines, uh, you need to make sure that you line up the marks. These marks are not top dead uh, 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 center. This is actually uh, it, it, it is mid stroke or halfway in. So the the Subaru engineers they designed the engine like this, so that when the technician is doing the servicing. Uh, if you were to accidentally turn the cams too much, you, uh, you won't uh, damage anything because the pistons are pushed away and the valves are also are, are, are far away from the pistons. So it, it's safe uh, to work on. It's not like uh, how the majority of manufacturers, when you line up the marks, it's at top dead center. It's not the case for these Subaru uh, engines. Now say that, uh, that you do want top dead center and you need to do something like uh, do a valve adjustment to adjust the valves, then you would have to use the timing cover to, uh, to get to the zero degree mark to get top dead center. You would have to have to aim for zero if you want to get top dead center if you're doing a valve adjustment. But in this case, we're doing the timing belt, so you just need to align the timing marks. You don't want to aim for zero. 
I just wanted to uh, to, to clear uh, a few things up. That's all. So now after you have lined up all of the, the marks, before you remove the belt, you just want to check the, the, uh, the timing belt guide here. You want to see how much the distance is between the guide and the belt. And so the, the specification states that it must be between 0.5 to 1.5 uh, millimeters in distance and so I made myself a, a makeshift uh, feeler gauge with some heavy duty uh, business cards so uh, I have one that's uh, 0.7 of a millimeter I have one that's that is one millimeter and 1.35 millimeters. Each one of these cards are about 0.35 of a millimeter in uh, thickness. So when I put the 0.7 in between here, it doesn't go in uh, very well. It's very tight. But when I put in only one of the business cards... It goes in uh, uh, easily. It slides in, slides in easily. So I may have to adjust it later after I put the new belt on. Uh, this is the the one uh, millimeter. There's a considerable amount of drag uh, in between there, so I may need to adjust it. Because this is less than one millimeter clearance. So I think I may need to increase the clearance a tiny bit. And again, uh, you will only see these on manual transmission vehicles only. They are not here on the automatic transmissions. So according to the timing belt... Uh, uh, information guide that was uh, available in the kit that I got f f by Eisen. We're going to relieve the tension by removing the the pulley that's, that's at the very bottom. A smooth pulley. The, uh, they call this a G1. So down here will be G1, G2, and this would be G3. And then you have the tensioner, and you have the water pump here, along with the, the thermostat and the housing. We are going to replace that today. So we're going to remove the bottom pulley. To relieve the, the tension. At the same time when you're loosening the bolt. You want to apply slight up, upward uh, a pressure on the pulley. So that you don't damage the threads uh, on the block. Apply slight upward uh, <laughs> pressure onto the pulley. Now we're going to remove the other uh, pulley now. G3. <clears throat> and 
You want to apply pressure to the bottom of the pulley as you are removing the bolt. They call this the, the G3 uh, <laughs> pulley. I'm using a, a 14 uh, <laughs> millimeter bolt. You can now uh, carefully remove the belt. You might, I might have to remove this guide out of the way. Now the cam here, it moved a tiny bit. So I'm going to have to, to, to bring it back uh, to, to where it was. In order to prevent this, uh, you probably either want to relieve the tension from the tensioner or you want to remove the belt off of both cams first. Uh, b before removing anything else otherwise there's a possibility that the cam can turn now uh, some people will have a, a different way or routine of doing the timing belt service on this vehicle uh, there's no right or wrong answer or wrong right or wrong way as long as you have everything all lined up and you put everything all back together and then there, there shouldn't be a problem. This is a spring loaded, so you have to be careful. This is the reason as to why Subaru, they, uh, they engineered the vehicle like this when it's in service so that you don't do uh, uh, any damage. So you don't do any damage to the valves or the pistons when you're doing the timing belt service. Just uh, double check the marks and make sure it's lined up. Just make sure that the marks are lined up again. And uh, you, you should be uh, okay. It's not a huge, huge deal if the cam turns a tiny bit. Just turn it back where it's supposed to be and just uh, continue the uh, procedure. So I have it lined up now. This with this. So now we're going to remove the timing belt guide out of the way and we're going to readjust it after we are done the timing belt job.
So now you can uh, remove the timing belt. So now we are going to remove the the tooth <laughs> pulley. They call it the the G two. So we're gonna remove the, the the pulley here. Remove the pulley out of the way. Now we are going to remove the the tensioner now. Make sure that the washer is still there and the seal is still there because that's what's holding it uh, in place. Now uh, before we remove the water pump, we're going to remove the, the lower radiator hose that's on the th thermostat. And we also have a bypass hose behind this one. Trying to get a good grip here to remove the clamp out of the way. Push up and down on the hose, <laughs> trying to wiggle it.
you might need to use the tool to remove the hose. have the the neighbor's cat that uh, that came for a visit now she's going inside So now I got the lower radiator hose out. We, now we're going to proceed to remove the, the water pump bolts. I think there's a total of six bolts. It's three, there's one inside here. One, two, three, four. You know, there's, uh, I believe there's two more somewhere. So what you want to do is transfer the bolts over.
to the new water pump. You can take the, the water pump out. You just need to remove the, the bypass hose that's on the water pump. I'm just underneath the vehicle because I'm having a hard time trying to get the bypass hose from under the hood because I don't have enough room or grip. So my water pump is out. So now I got the water pump out. Uh, it came with the two seals here, and the uh, comes with the uh, the new uh, gasket in here. And what I did is I, I transferred the bolts over. So I just, uh, I, I took the old bolts and I, I, I put them on where they belong uh, onto the new part. So I know where all the bolts go. Um, it looks like the bolts are all the same size, but say that the bolts are not all the same size, then you know on where all the bolts go. So now I'm just going to transfer over the seals. I'm going to open up the thermostat housing for the old one. I'm probably going to use a new housing instead of uh, using the old one. So I'm going to transfer the, the new uh, seal.
I'm going to install a new seal. It's a new seal. You don't reuse uh, old uh, uh, seals. Make sure that the rubber is uh, is flush inside here at the back. So uh, I have a new thermostat housing and thermostat. So I'm going to I'm going to transfer the bolts over. And what you want to do, you probably want to clean the bolts up afterwards. You want to clean the, the threads on the bolts for the water pump and these ones. Sometimes the, the old thermostat housing, the aluminum, it may be pitted and damaged. I already bought a new one, so I'm going to use the new one. This is the old uh, thermostat. So uh, I'm going to be using the, the Isen thermostat. This is pretty much uh, the OEM from Subaru. But uh, I, I bought this uh, from a different uh, source. I didn't get it from the dealer, but Subaru uses the same exact one. Because I've, I've heard that there were, there were a lot of problems with aftermarket uh, thermostats. So here's the, the new thermostat. It comes with the seal already installed on it. Now every time I buy Isen water pumps or thermostats or something, I always notice that they grind, they grind the the uh, the logo down because usually it will say the the Subaru logo on here, so they they grind it down.